Hey everyone, so I got another one of these Takara Tomy Arts uh, cute cars from Nissan. It's called the Nissan Figaro. Uh, Nissan back in the early 90s made four specific vehicles called Pike cars, and they're all kind of like retro styled but small vehicles. The Figaro itself, they only made it for the 1991 model year, but they made 20,000 of them, so it's not particularly super rare, but you don't, you don't see too many of these driving around, although I have where I live. All right, uh, oh, this says part two. I don't know what was in part one, but uh, we know there's at least part, oh, you know what? I think what it is is part two is just the Figaro and maybe it's different colorways, if I had to guess. I'm gonna have to put my own mirrors on, it seems. And legal jargon there. I'm curious if you guys see a date here. There's so much text. I don't see a date. I kind of like to know, you know, how old my toys are. Gives an idea of, you know, their value, but I didn't see it there. So if I got to clip these off, I might as well do it now. What's nice is they give you four mirrors in case you mess up. Or, or are, they, are they different kinds of mirrors? No, I think they're identical. All right. Well, let's just, I guess you could just break those off. You don't even need clippers. Alrighty. Uh, reading Wikipedia, uh, this thing was powered by a one liter turbocharged in, uh, uh, let's see, yeah, just to confirm, inline four, and it had a three-speed automatic transmission. Uh, that engine was making around 75 horsepower. Not, definitely not a lot of power, but this is a small car. So, in fact, let me look up the weight. The weight of this thing was 810 kilos, or 1790 pounds. So, uh, I'm sure it was okay. You know, just an average car for the 90s, early 90s, as far as uh, 0 to 60 times or whatnot. People aren't buying these for to race, right? They're just buying them to uh, be cute, <laughs> I imagine, retro. I pulled up this image because uh, it's hard to say it's a small car until you realize, you know, if that's an average size car, this is a small car. So kind of like one of these death trap kind of vehicles. I wouldn't want to be on the freeway and get into an accident in one of these things. All right, well, let's get to the actual model here. I suppose I should put the mirrors in. Let's see how easy that might be. Oh boy, these are some small pieces though. Let's see if I can get some tweezers here. I'm curious if they'll just go in by friction or if you really need to glue them in. Eh, well, yeah, that's loose. Let me come back after I glue them in. All right, I just use school glue in case, you know, I break them off, I have spares. If I use crazy glue, it'll permanently ruin the purple, you know, body. So school glue is the way to go, I think, in this case. We'll see if the mirrors stay in place because they're still drying. Uh, so if you haven't picked up on it, this whole thing is made of plastic. It's, there's no dye cast in here, but I'm cool with that because you usually get better details. Well, you can get better details with plastic where die cast cannot. Yeah, though you will see here, I don't know if that's my oil from my skin, something's going on there. Decent tight panel gaps here, you got the little bump for the uh, lock and the handle as well. They're both protruding, painted silver, a little bit of a finger re recess detail there. Uh, the windows are, you know, molded, so they're kind of distorted. Uh, but they did manage to get the crease here for the door panel, and what looks like something indicating the molding. Uh, it's hard to say. Uh, maybe it's just the thickness of the plastic itself and not paint. The top here, it's got like a cream color on it. So in case you didn't pick up on those photos I showed, this is a fixed convertible, meaning this doesn't move at all, but the this part folds back, folds back into the trunk. Uh, this purple is not an original color, according to Wikipedia, so, but... Uh, they originally made 8,000 and there was so much demand they made 12,000 more and there's even a lottery system uh, So these cars are in quite high demand. Maybe they had purple for the second wave. I, I don't know. Darn it. See that mirror is not setting properly 
Okay, well, anyways. Going to the front, we have a nice texture here. Yeah, uh, turn signals are raised, printed orange, and the grill looks like it has silver going around it, so that's nice. There's a little silver on this raised emblem here. And then obviously silver going around the headlights and creating like flowing into these little hip details. What do you call it? The shoulder line. This chrome work on the shoulder line. Okay. Uh, there's a blank light license plate. And then the bumpers are silver. And they're, I guess they must be part of the base because you can see an air gap here. All right. The windshield has black paint going around for the molding and the wiper blades also are a little bit raised and well this one's painted okay but this one uh, they missed the mark. I'm touching the wiper blade here but the paint is past it. There's actually a vent detail here but no paint. Can't tell if that's accurate. No, the real car is just color coded anyway so I guess that's fine. And then these little bumps I assume are for the fluid for the washers. Alrighty, anything on this side? Huh, well, a fuel filler on this side. These are all right-hand drive cars, according to Wikipedia. There's an orange uh, raised marker here. And then the wheels are just plastic, and they're plain looking, just like the real car. This little dot is the air valve, and that's it. <laughs> they're so simple looking. I might do a wheel swap on this. We'll see. All right, so the back we have painted tail lights and turn signals. Yeah, that seems fine. The license plate area is painted silver, but the license plate itself is white, so that's nice. Seems to have exposed hinges, which are painted silver and raised as well. There's a third brake light here, obviously. And then the details here are just your standard plastic molded details. You got air going in the steering wheel, spokes there. Uh, there's a shifter knob, some ribbing on the seats. Kind of a plain dashboard, although the real one might be that plain. No, actually it's not that plain looking at that photograph. There's actually a lot of gauges in that, in the real one. All right, well, and then yeah, the mirror as well, that's my fault if they look bad. Uh, it's just, yeah, I gotta wait for the glue to set. Uh, well, we gotta, well, we might as well look at the bottom here. There are some minor details, and you see it's made by T-Arts, so we just don't know when. And it doesn't tell you what the car is, which is really stupid, I think. Who cares about the look of the bottom? Tell me what the car is and the scale of the thing. All right. Uh, the top here is just a clear piece of plastic painted that same cream color. And let's see how easy that is to put on. Oh, I see. There's a little bit of a ledge here, so it's going to rest on that. Well, yeah, that's quite easy to put on. It doesn't really lock in place. I think it's just gravity holding that in place. Maybe a little friction there. Oh, well, you know what? Well, all right, there you go. I'll probably display it without the... Well, you know, it actually looks kind of cool with the top. But maybe it would be better this way. So now the question is... Swapping the wheels out. I think I can do it. Ah, boy, my mirrors are not dry. I'm probably going to have to just glue those on again. But let's see how we can get this apart. Hmm. Or maybe I use tools. Maybe I'll use my key tools. Hold on. Alright, I got the rear end off already. So if you want a quick, easy tool, just take an old key like this and then take a file and, you know, file out a hole or a hacksaw blade would do that as well. And then you got to take a file and sand it down so it's a chamfer like this. And so the intention is this hole gets around the axle assuming you have some axle to get around, in this case I do. And you just gotta wedge it in there and then, you know, pry the wheel off. You gotta do it carefully, particularly on this one because it's a plastic base. But uh, I managed to do it on the other one, so let's continue prying. Maybe I'll go to the other side. If you have too much slack, you can have two. I did it with one on the other one, so I can share the other key. Maybe the angle's different. Oh, I see. This key's angled slightly different, I think. Or 
where's just the axles really grabbing this tire? Nope, I have too much slack going. Alright. I think it just destroyed that wheel. Yeah. So, I guess the issue with this brand, they're using these rounded, you know, uh, traction clamps. They're not in line with the actual axle. The barbs, I guess you would call those. And so, it takes a lot of force and it pretty much dented the whole plastic wheel. But uh, I'm okay because I don't really care. Those are, they look pretty realistic. But they're still lame wheels. And now you can see my school glue mirror still hasn't dried. So just some poster putty. And these are wheels from uh, the Yoshima Grachans. But then I added the uh, BNDS alloy inner. So it's kind of like a two brand wheel. But they work pretty well on this thing because they're supposed to be 15 inch wheels in the 164 scale world. Yeah, so the putty's great because it never hardens. You can set it to steer, you can set camber like that. All right, so it's really good stuff. This one, this gray one I use is called Uhu Pad Fix Pro. So let's compare it to a few other small cars here. The first of which is that other T Arts car. This is the BE1. So this is one of those Pike cars as well. Uh, oddly, this one has license plate printing. Yeah, right? I'm not sure why the Figaro doesn't, but uh, that's the way it is. You know, these wheels are kind of lame too. I'm wondering if I should swap these out. See, this thing's so misprinted, it bothers me. It's just that this car doesn't really excite me so much. This one is a lot cooler. Yeah, I debate that. Maybe I'll keep the wheels there. Um, let's see, the next one is a Honda Life Diva. This is made by a brand called Doyosha, although it doesn't tell you that on the bottom. Another one is a Suzuki Cappuccino, which is kind of a, a really small car as well in real life. Uh, can't focus, here we go. So this one is actually by BNDS. So these are the wheels. They give you two sets of wheels. You can lower the ride height and it has a steering gimmick here. It's really cool. I, I rather like this, this little guy. Uh, death trap in real life probably, but looks cool in miniature form. Here's a fairly modern vehicle, a Chinese car called a Mini EV. I put some license plates on it. That's even, that's really small. And then uh, here's a Fiat 500, a more modern Fiat 500. This is done up by Kyosho. <clears throat> uh, let's see here. I'm going to move this out of the way. Let's pop a Nissan GTR in here just to show <laughs> the size. Right. I mean, a GTR is a pretty big car, I guess, for a, a sports car. But uh, compared to a sedan, not so much. So I just had to keep the roof because I just threw the spare mirrors into the interior and then I have supposed to putty holding the roof down. If I ever break off these mirrors, I already know where the other two are. So that is it for today's uh, plastic car toy show. Hopefully you enjoyed it and hopefully I'll eventually pick up the others. I know they have the S-Car Go, there's T-Arts. I don't know if they have the Nissan POW, I think they might. It's just a matter of whether or not I can find them at a decent price. I'll see you guys.